Dr. Omar Johnson is a Pan-Africanist. He's an outspoken advocate for black people and for uh, black rights. And he was a, a teacher and a professor and a psychiatrist. Um, and works with students. And, 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 and he's controversial to some. To others, he's a leader. Um, he's a dynamic speaker. And he's very provocative in the way he speaks. Very, very, very charismatic in his speaking ability. And I, 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 I think that... Uh, He's one of those people that you know, definitely you won't won't have to guess what he believes and what he's saying, what his point is. So he, he went on a breakfast club today. He talked with Charlamagne the God and DJ Envy, and there's two things. One was he said Joe Biden was kissing the black people ass. He said black people, you ain't black if you don't vote for Joe Biden. And then he went out and did nothing for black people specifically. Instead, they passed boom one law on his first day. Uh, to, to, to protect transgenders. And Dr. Umar said, and that's good. I support that. Hooray. What about black people? Then, recently, they passed the uh, the COVID Protection of Asian American Pacific Islanders uh, from Discrimination or something like that uh, act because of uh, harassment they've been feeling since COVID-19. And he said, that's good. I'm great you did that. What about black people? He said, it's so ironic that Joe Biden can come out and say black people need to vote for him, but at the end of the day, he doesn't do anything specifically for black people. What happened to our criminal justice reform? What happened to police reform? These are things that Joe Biden could do via uh, the same way he's doing work for transgenders and work for other, and, and, uh, Asian brothers and sisters. Why is that he do? Why is he not doing that for Black America? Why is he? Why is he dragging his feet? Why can't we get done the same things that other groups get? Now, I know that some people say it's unconstitutional for Joe Biden to do anything for any certain group. We did something for transgender folks. He did something for Asian folks. No one's saying he shouldn't have done anything for transgender folks or for Asian folks. He's saying, what about us? Where, where's our 40 acres in the mule? Where's our uh, situation getting handled? Um, we the voting back that got you in the White House. With, um, I think you would have made it. Even without transgenders voting for you, I think you would have made it. Even without uh, a good portion of the Asian community voting for you, but we know you wouldn't have made it, Joe Biden. We know you wouldn't have made it without black votes. So why come black people can't get things specifically for their vote? Other groups do. Why come we can't get that? And so I agree with Dr. Umar, and I've been saying this for a long time. That's the thing I have beef with. People say, Tim, you must be a Republican the way you come at Democrats. No. We keep giving our votes to Democrats. We never get. How can we expect anything out of Republicans if we never vote for them? Come on, Johnson. Like, that's stupid. I do. I, I mean, when Trump was president, I'd say shit about him. But if we never, if we 95% of the time vote for Democrats, how can we expect anything out of Republicans if we always vote for Democrats? So we can't expect anything out of them. They don't give us anything to expect. So, that's not part of my conversation, typically. My goal is to get something for our vote. That's all. Get something for the black vote, something in return. So, I agree with Dr. Umar on that point. Joe Biden is only president because of us. And I've had to hear it from people all the time. Oh, Tim Black, why do the black people vote for Joe Biden? Why are black people so stupid? Why do they vote for this guy? This guy's horrible. That's because they looked at Trump and said, Trump's horrible too. Be that as it may. Be that as it may. We got to hold Joe Biden and stay on Joe Biden's ass, unlike AOC, because Dr. Umar is right and we are right. And we are already right. We were right. We didn't need Dr. Umar to say it. There are these people who needed Dr. Umar to say what we've all been saying. I know I've been saying it for a couple of years. Um, where's our stuff? Where's something for our vote? But, you know, people don't really pay attention to electoral politics. And then they hear um, Dr. Umar said, and it's like, yeah, I mean, I said it. They don't watch you, Tim, so they don't care. You ain't on the breakfast club. I get it. Point is, what he said is not really that radical. It's basic. Very basic. Other groups vote for Joe Biden. They be expecting something too. And they are expecting something. And hence they're getting something. Because they do a, uh, I vote for you, but you better 
Same time. Same time. They want exchange for their vote. Black people give votes and go, I hope he does right by us. That's the problem. The other side of that, they always pointing over and say, well, look, if you, if you don't pick me, you get stuck with that guy, and he hates you. He hates the blacks. I love the blacks. I'm a friend to the Negro, so you got to go with me anyway. So that's the catch-22 that they tend to put us in. Be that as it may, some folks are opting out and coming out of that mentality. So I agree with Dr. Umar on that point, guys. And all I'm saying is, how could he be wrong? I mean, it's very obvious. Joe Biden hasn't done anything for the black community. It's because he doesn't have to. Politicians do what they have to do, right? And that what everybody kept telling me, Tim? They're only doing what they have to do. If you don't make them do more, they're not going to do more. Squeaky wheel gets the, gets the oil. When I lived in the hood, my refrigerator kept breaking down. It kept breaking down, and it kept breaking down to the point my food was spoiling. I went to the rental office, and I said, guys, this is my fourth time at the rental office. Damn it, I need my refrigerator fixed. I right, look, man, look, keep the noise down. Keep the, we've got some clients. I don't want to hear that shit. I need my refrigerator fixed. And then fixed today. I'm not leaving here without my refrigerator fixed. Now. Hell, give me a new refrigerator. That's it. Give me one today. I'm not leaving without it. Mr. Black, calm down. Mr. Black, no, nah, you calm down. Get my damn refrigerator, man. This is my fourth time up here. I was pissed. I was lit. Manager came out the back, through, out of the back. Resident manager comes out the back. Um, uh, Mr. Black, please come back here. Let me, let me talk to you, man. Let me, come, let me talk to you. Have a seat, sir. Have a seat. I don't need to sit down, man. I need my refrigerator replaced. You, you hear me say that out there? He said, yeah, Mr. 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 Black, you know what? He gets to picks up the phone. Hey, Curtis, on the walkie talkie, Curtis, yeah. I'll go to one of the new units, take the refrigerator out of one of the new units, and get it over to Mr. Black's apartment. Mr. Black, what's your apartment number? I'm at XYZ number, 22222. Apartment something, 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 you know what the hell it is. Okay, go to 2222, something, something, you know what the hell it is, and put it in there. That's Mr. Black's apartment. All right, get that done this morning. Get it done now. Stop what you're doing, go do it now. Let me know when it's done. All right. I'm sitting there like, thank you. You know? It's man. Why are you making me get all loud like that, man? I don't like getting like that. I don't like getting irate like that, man. Make me bust a sweat, get all loud. I don't like doing that to people. He said, sometimes you got to do that, though. Sometimes you got to get loud, Mr. Black. It's all good, man. Squeaky wheel gets the oil. Well, Joe Biden, this is us squeaking. And we ain't going to stop squeaking until you give us our goddamn refrigerator. Last but not least, there was another point made in that video. There was something trending today. And guys, you remember that, uh, DJ Envy is a, is a co-host on The Breakfast Club along with Charlamagne the God. Most popular morning show, hip-hop morning show. Maybe morning show in music, okay? Um, just a you know, large, huge audience, if you don't know. And they start talking about the Makia, Makia Bryant story, right? Talk, talking about that situation. And I got to say this, guys, because it happened again. Dr. Umar was saying that the cop did not have to shoot the 16-year-old with a knife four times. And don't make excuses for the cop shooting a 16, shooting a woman four times in the back who had a knife. It's unjustified. They could have did something else, and that's where the conversation went. And DJ Envy kept arguing, like some people have argued, what if that was your daughter? What if that was your daughter that was about to be stabbed? You want the officer to do exactly what the officer did. You want an officer to stop the threat. You want the officer to save your daughter who's about to be stabbed by this other girl. You don't know how old the girl is. All you see is a knife in the hand, and it's about to go this way, and anything can happen, and the officer had to do what the officer had to do. And see, I've noticed this all weekend. I told myself I was going to take the weekend off. I was going to unplug from this shit. I was going to get myself a mental, some mental break, a mental rest, a rest, and escape from this, this 
uh, mor- morbid uh, you know, uh, death and mayhem that have been covered. But everywhere I looked, I kept seeing that. I saw DMX's funeral, then uh, uh, Shock G's funeral. Well, not funeral, but his death. And then Black Rob's funeral. And then all this stuff. And everywhere I look, and then, and then Andrew Brown, and then uh, uh, Thompson. Uh, uh, and I'm like, everywhere I look, there's death. And 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 the young lady, DeAndre, DeAndre, DeAndre's right. Everywhere I look, death, 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 death. And I keep hearing these people making these comments about the sixteen-year-old child. And out of all the comments that I heard people made make about how you had to save this this woman, who actually wasn't a child, it was a grown-ass woman who came over to the house. I wasn't a child who was in the pink sweatsuit. But she's still a person, so that's not my point. My point is this. I have not heard a single soul say, what if that was your daughter who was shot four times in the back? Yeah, everybody's quick to assume that their child is the one about to get stabbed. Maybe, because we don't know what would have happened. But no one's put themselves in the position of the parent whose daughter gets shot. Now, I had some dumbass on Twitter say, well, my daughter wouldn't have a knife. Well, dumbass, you don't get to choose what bad decisions your child make, especially when she's still a child, an immature child whose brain is not fully developed, who doesn't make the best decisions, okay? That's most children. That's what teenagers. Teenagers do dumb shit, okay? So, back to my point. Why is it that no one put themselves in a position that maybe that could have been your child? Why is that not even cross the minds of all these people who want to pontificate, who want to wax poetical about Makia? Why have none of them put themselves in a position that that's your baby? For some reason, you do not correlate. You do not identify, that's the word, you do not identify that that could have been your loved one. And if that was your loved one, I'm sure you would come to the same conclusion I did. When I said, hey, you didn't have to shoot that child four times. Why wasn't one shot enough? Why four shots? How many shots do you have to shoot a person who's almost in arm's reach? And I'm not saying I'm right or I'm wrong. This is my opinion about it. Both the, both the young ladies' lives are precious, right? So it just dawns on me. And it rubs me the wrong way that there's no compassion for a dead child. It said everybody wants to be Columbo. Everybody wants to be the the solver of uh, of crime. They want to be, oh, I think this, I think, but none of them have empathy, and none of them want to go in that cold place of doubt because it hurts. It's painful to think that could be your child because it could be. It could be. You know, sometimes children do bad things, dumb things, things they live to regret. Hopefully, they live to regret them. Sometimes children screw up. Sometimes they make the wrong choice. They run from a cop. They tussle with a cop. They talk back with someone. They drive when they shouldn't. They take something that wasn't theirs. Sometimes children do the wrong thing. It does not make them the devil. And with a little grace and some actual heroes, maybe it means, it doesn't mean, that they die because of it. Maybe you think that that cop who shot that girl four times in the back is a hero because you shot an assailant. Maybe you think that because you don't love that girl. Because if you did, you see her as just one of God's creatures as well. We 
what they say about the white kid that shot the six, four Asian women at the massage shops? What what the cop call him? What did he say? He was just having a bad day. Yeah, Makia. We saw where her bad day got her. A coffin. Have empathy. That's all I'm saying. Have empathy. We don't know all the answers. These are just opinions. Really easy to arm quarter, armchair quarterback from, from here, right? I'm not the guy there. I ain't got to make that decision. But have some empathy. That's all I'm saying. All right, guys, I'm going to go to the comment section. My name is Tim Black, Real Tim Black, Facebook, Twitter, Tim Black at Night on Instagram. Follow me there. Be a part of it. Go join TimBlack.com to become a member. The show ain't funded by the big boys. That's why we speak loud and make a lot of noise. What we got, Johnson? Let me ask you something. Do they know us? When I say they, I mean the talking heads on cable news. Do they know you? I mean, they talk about the world as if it's a sport. They play political games, report on our pain, rack our brain to feed the stock exchange, but do they know us? Do they know what we care about? Nope. They're too far away. They can't see us. They can't feel us. They can't relate to us. See, when you want to know what's going on in your world, trust someone who lives in your world. Subscribe.